Okay, we're going to do another example of a proof by contraposition. So let's recall the steps to a proof by contraposition. First, we want to express the statement as a universal conditional statement. Next, we want to rewrite the statement as it's contrapositive. And then finally, we want to use a direct proof to prove the contrapositive. So we're going to start by supposing this first part, as we always do in a direct proof. And then we're going to want to deduce the second part. Okay, so let's look at our next example. If x and y are two integers whose product is odd, then both must be odd. Hmm. It's a little interesting to parse, um, but we're starting out by saying we have two integers, x and y, and if their product is odd, then x and y are both odd. So let's write that formally. Next step is to do the contrapositive, and this is made a little bit more difficult by the fact that our second part that we're negating has an and, and if you recall, if we negate a P and Q, we used a Morgan's Law, right? And we're going to get the negation of P or the negation of Q by Morgan's Law. So we're going to need to use that when we write our contrapositive. Okay, so we want to do the negation of that second part, which is if x is even or y is even, then we want to do the negation of this first part, then x, y is even. Right, and again, I'm going straight to even. I could say x, y is not odd. Um, but the, the obvious conclusion from that that we've talked about earlier in this class is that that means it's even. So I've just sort of skipped a step and jumped straight to even. Now let's do our proof by contraposition. All right, we always want to label our proof. Okay, we're going to do... our direct proof, starting by supposing the first part of this contrapositive. Suppose x and y are any integers. Now, what's another way of saying that x is even or y is even? I can say such that x or y 
is even. Another way of saying this is that they one of them must be even. Okay, so since x and y are just variables anyway, I can do a trick called without loss of generality. Without loss I can suppose x is even. And again, the reason I can do that is because there are no distinguishing characteristics between X and Y. So I'm grabbing one of them that's even, because we know one of them is even, and I'm going to call it X. And I don't know what Y is. Y could be even or Y could be odd. It's not specified in this program, in this problem. Okay. Um, I'm going to move to the next page for a little bit more space. So if x is even, then x equals 2k for some integer k. And that's the definition of even. Well, let's look at xy. If I substitute 2k in for x, I get this is 2ky by substitution. I'm going to let z equal ky. And notice that z is an element of the integers due to integer closure. Well, then what does xy mean, uh, equal again? Well, it's 2 times z, right? Because we said xy is 2 times k times y, and k times y is z. So I get that xy is equal to 2z, where z is an integer. Well, that's even. By the definition of even. And that is what we were trying to show. If we go back a slide, right? Oh, we forgot to write it. I forgot to say that. Um, Let's complete their proof. We want to show that xy is even. That's our goal. Right? And that's what we've just done. We've shown that xy is even. Um, so this is which was to be shown. which means the contrapositive is true, which means the original statement right here is true. Okay, now let's go one more page. Um, there's a few small changes I noticed. I forgot to say proof by Contra position, which is important. It is part of the proof. You have to do it. Um, I also have forgotten to write my goal. Um, so we want to show that x, y is even. There we have it.